last night, I admit, I got a little bummed. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of not just let down, but oppressed, you could say, by my distress with which I had allowed, oh, some pastor, you know, to affect me and then to see another pastor do the same thing. It wasn't so much their personal relationship, you know, with God that bothered me. It was their portrayal of what they were, you know, in ministry on the internet and how they were affecting people's lives and what they were doing with that that kind of bummed me out. It was like, how sad, you know, when you see potential of a person being able to share Jesus or to relate them and to choose to be a part of the world in its ways, to be involved in things that are self-gratifying or self-fulfilling. And I'll admit, it, it just bummed me out, you know, and I've run into it before. I mean, pastors are people too. We all have egos. We have issues, we have learning curves, we have strengths and weaknesses, we have differentiations of the Spirit of God working in our lives. There are certain manifestations of how God is going to use you, and He's going to use you in a variety of ways to different peoples at different times, in different settings, in different situations. And yet, I found myself bummed out. <laughs> and it didn't just carry over for one day. It was like, I prayed that night, you know, the first day that I had seen it, and it carried over to the next day, and I knew that there was an issue, you know, that I had an issue. It wasn't their issue, because, you know, they're who they are. You know, if they flesh out, they flesh out. Praise the Lord. You know, that's the way they are. But for me, it was my issue. It was something that I had to take possession of to deal with, you know, my reaction as well as my action to go forward from it. So I chose to go to, you know, church. <laughs> Where else would you go? Well, I went to the Lord, you know, I mean, I prayed, you know, and God said, you know, not much, <laughs> to be honest. You know, when I prayed, it like, kind of like, so? <laughs> well, Lord, thanks a lot. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> so? <laughs> but I didn't receive the satisfaction of having committed it unto Him and let it go. So I knew that I needed more because I was saddened and sorrowful, you know, and I was waiting on the Lord too. And so I decided, you know, be, be that it was going to still be a financial challenge, I decided, well, Lord, you know, I know I'm in need. So I went to go talk to my wife about it and bingo, wrong, <laughs> slap in the face, you know, kind of didn't turn out the way I thought. So I kind of went, well, you know, okay, forget about talking to my wife. I need to go to church. <laughs> I need to pray, you know. I need to be filled up, fed up, you know, and prayed up. And uh, we can do that at home, don't get me wrong. And you can do that in your own personal devotions and studies and everything else. But I need it for myself, you know, to go, you know, to the body of believers, you know. And I've been wanting to anyways, you know, to go at a night service to enjoy and to see what it was like because I'm getting gradually more involved in God's leading as He chooses, you know. So I was kind of like, well, you know, let's go check it out. So I talked to my wife, you know, and we decided, okay, we're going to go, you know. We went last night. And it was wonderful. I mean, you know, I, I, I knew it would be, you know, but, you know, she was surprised, you know. And we went and the pastor wasn't there, you know, and one of the other guys was teaching, and it was good. I mean, it was good teaching. It was on the book of Acts, you know, and we were talking about the Holy Spirit and about being filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit of God and, and um, well, empowered by God. And of that teaching, I was kind of like enjoying it because of some of the worship that had gone on, some of the word and the way it was being presented. I was smiling to myself thinking, you know, in my day I've seen a lot you know, and I've experienced a lot. And before we even started in the study, we had a young man who had just got saved you know, about a year ago. You know, and and uh, he had been, no, he couldn't have been saved a year ago. Well, he's been saved for a little while. Anyways, 
But he said he'd been going to church, you know, for a long time, and he'd never seen us. So he came straight towards us because we wound up going to church early. And directly, you know, started talking and said his name, you know. And I just sat there listening, not saying a word, you know. And he didn't need me to say a word. <laughs> you know, he was polite and friendly and, and started talking about how he got saved and, you know, how long he'd been to going to church and the fact that he needed to go to church and the fact that he wanted to go to church and when he got saved and how he got saved and where he was from and what he was doing and where he was going and how he was acting and what he believed in and what he was learning from and going towards and how many books of the Bible he read and what he was discussing, you know, with the Lord and how God was using him. And I just, you know, I was listening and I was just content, content to just be still and see and, you know, I think I mentioned, I might have said six sentences at the most and um, he was a wonderful gentleman, you know, a wonderful young man, you know, and I thought he must increase and I must decrease. And that was kind of what my thought was at the time, was that, you know, your own personal development is important. But likewise, so too, God brings you to a place of, you have run the race, you have finished the course, there is laid up for you a treasure in heaven. But now, though you do not ascend to heaven once having completed that with which God has sent you to do, you may be there just to encourage the brethren, you know, to be a part without being in charge of. And I was watching, you know, and I kind of enjoyed the gentleman, you know, my wife really enjoyed him, so I thought, wow, praise the Lord, that's why we're here, you know. So she told me later, you know, she really enjoyed that. And so we went into the service, you know, and we had worship, you know, and it's like challenging in some ways because it's a younger generation that's into syncopated, you know, kind of, you know, different rhythms. And the young man had talked about how he had felt like, you know, he didn't like some songs and sang loud some songs, you know, with back and forth about it. And I was laughing because I was thinking, boy, Lord, talk about driving home a point. Let's see. He had no father. I had no father. He was born in L.A. I was born in L.A. He was, you know, like, struggled with worship. And I don't struggle with worship because I can worship to any song. But, you know, he had talked about that preferential. And I didn't say anything about preferences. But, you know, for him it was an issue because he was, like, not singing. You know, I'm challenged by worship sometimes because it's hard to sing. I mean, some of the ballads that are being sung nowadays are kind of tough. You know, they're more ballads for kind of like sing-alongs than they are for worship, you know. But that's what the young people are into, you know. They're kind of like a sing-spiration because they're listening to it on their ear pods, you know, and earbuds, you know, and doing this kind of constant bombardment with it, you know. And so it's kind of like, well, all right, you know, that's... If they get into an attitude of worship, praise the Lord. You know, because my generation, yeah, we were a little different, you know, and we did things a little differently. And I was responsible, as Keith Green once said, for my generation of souls, you know, and this new generation coming up, they are responsible for their generation of souls, you know, that God would use them to minister to them through those who are of them so that they would be one accord in that with which they are doing. And we who are older in the faith, yes, we, we enjoy it and we participate because we, you know, been around for a while. You know, we could probably listen to any kind of music except organ. <laughs> Forget the organ. <laughs> you know, I can do synthesizers and electric pianos, but, and don't give me a pipe organ. You know, don't go too far back. Now, I can sing all the old hymns. I don't know them, but, you know, they're pretty easy rhythmic, so I can sing them. And even these syncopated modern trance kind of like jazzed more or less uh, rhythms that people are doing with their singing and worship I can do that you know. it's just I have to work at it I'd rather not work <laughs> I'd rather just sing and praise and go there you know but it was beautiful you know I mean it was wonderful to be able to relax and to let go of that too to just you know not not worry about it you know it's like okay fine you know sang and worshipped it and enjoyed it. And then it took a break. It was like, well, that's different. You know, and stopped and went out and kind of like, you know, had a cup of coffee or you know, tea, water, you know, for me, water. And just kind of watched the people, you know. And it was interesting because little parts of the new church that I'm going to reminded me of different parts of my life that I've been through. You know, I saw different things like brickwork that reminded me of some place I'd been, and 
you know, people of a certain, you know, fellowship sharing, you know, reminded me of certain places I've been, and other things that it, that were going on around me reminded me of where I've been. You know, and that's one of the things that's good about, you know, when you're a scribe, you know, instructed unto the kingdom of God, you know, that brings forth out of his treasure just things both old and new. I'm able to enjoy the new, but I'm able to appreciate the old, too. You know, I have this balance of being from, you know, the Jesus generation and seeing the millennial generation in and of itself, you know, developing and growing and moving in the direction that God would have them to do. Because that is what we all are, you know, is going forward, not sitting on our hands or standing on our feet without doing something in the kingdom of God. And so I was blessed, you know, last night that I could turn my aggravations to appreciations by way of seeing in the physical form those people that maybe I won't get to know, you know, personally or intimately and who knows how much time we have left. But I know in other ways who they are and how they are. I pray for them and enjoy them as they are. And that's what God wants us to do every day is to appreciate how far he's brought us and how far we're still going. We're never going to stay the same. We're not going to remain. And that was kind of what was interesting was that I met someone else who you know, had given the teaching that he had always been in the same city. And I thought, I would love that. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow. You know, to grow up into you know, the stature with which he had taught was wonderful. I was a man of God, you know, and I was amazed at his good teaching and blessed by it. And I guess that's what we all need to recognize and to realize in our life that God wants to bless us, even from the most unusual places, whether it be a new believer or an old believer, whether it be a man that was raised in the same place, grown up into what he has become in God, or whether someone like me that's, you know, every time the wind blows, Michael goes, <laughs> you know, and I'm not like a piece of paper, you know, that has no substance, that's just blown away or blown out, but rather God takes me and took me different places in different times to be there for individuals. I may not have been there for large, giant, mega ministries, but, you know, I've been there for individuals at times, and that's blessed me. And so, I guess what I learned, you know, and what I enjoyed was that Keith Green had said one time about that scripture, or well, about that thought that he had that I mentioned, you know, earlier was that we're responsible for our generation, you know, and of my generation, you know, I'm glad to see the faithful that have remained that way or have come around full circle. Even the ones that disappointed me, you know, that I saw that forced me into going back to church to be filled again with the joy of the Lord, you know, to, you know, kind of like be, oh, it's okay, you know, God's in control, it's fine, you know. And I always knew that, but it, you, sometimes your feelings have to catch up with your faith. And one of the things that God does in establishing our feelings to catch up with our faith is that our faith is grounded and founded in the Word of God. It's never based upon the emotions that come and go with even taking a piece of sugar, you know, and your emotions will change, or or having a sugar downer, or having ca caffeine, or coffee, or whatever it may be. Those things can affect your emotions, but your devotion to God is based upon faith, not feeling. And that's where our devotions ought to be, is founded on the Word of God, as we seek to follow not our feelings, or our emotional response to loving God, but rather the fruit of the Spirit of God that the true love that He intended for us to have would be grown up, that it's not based upon a feeling, but upon a process of God's Spirit being made manifest in our life as we go through the experiences of life daily. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? 
If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in any secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord God? Behold, the heaven and heavens of heaven cannot contain thee. How much less this house have I builded? Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. You are a temple of the living God. And I guess that's what amazed me, you know, in thinking about that last part. You are a temple of the living God. Inside of me, as I sat in the fellowship, in the church, in the sanctuary, and in the foyer, and the kind of like eating area, being a temple of the Holy Spirit, the Jews worshipped at times in Jerusalem at the temple offering up sacrifices to a God who wasn't there. They did their religious duty. They did their perfunctory functions. They carried on the work of the ministry, but God was not there. God was in Jesus manifesting the Spirit of God and the Word of God and the Father and the word of God fulfilled in that God would be in the midst of them. And when Jesus came to the temple and he was on the outside, not on the inside, and he wasn't in the Holy of Holies in the presence of God Almighty being that presence where the, the altar was, where the Bema seat, where the, where the manifestation of those things that are in heaven were contained on earth. And Jesus was outside it was a very poignant picture of what happens when we don't look to the person but look to the religion instead we have to be aware of those people around us that they are the temple of the living God that God is in them that God died for them that that is the priority of our life it's not about the church we go to it never will be it's not about the temple we build, the ministry we construct, the feelings we have, the house we live in, but it'll always be about the person that has the living God in them. And we should not worship that person, but rather we should appreciate the work that God in them is doing. And that's how I felt when I saw the young man who had been saved for a short period of time and only read four books of the Bible. I appreciated the work of God that was in him and his joy and his consistency in the faith that God had given him. And I appreciated the man of God that was teaching, who though not the actual pastor himself, was likewise a teacher and a minister of God, using that gift which God has given him and enabled to bless those that were listening because of God using him. And I was able to appreciate the congregation of people gathered together where God was in the midst of them. For where two or three are, met, are gathered together, I could see Jesus in them. And that's what I think is the reality of recognizing how it's not about temple, it's not about teaching, it's not about structure, it's not about religion, it's not about our practices, but it is about persons individuals, people that we talk to and walk with every day, whether we share the gospel or whether we just share maybe some cookies, like my wife does with our landlord. <laughs> it's cookie time. Hey, cool, cookie monster. <laughs> yeah, I'm for that. You know, or whether it be a cup of cold water given to your enemies. Now, of course, fiery coals are put upon their head, but hey, you know, that's one way to win a war. <laughs> Give them the water. You know, forget the guns, give them water. But the reality of how God would have us to be is to simply bless, encourage, strengthen, 
because the things that remain are weak and feeble and are easily devastated by the way the world is today. So we who are older in the faith ought to bear one another's burdens and encourage those that are younger for in and of itself they are great in their mighty deeds they're going out to do. And we watch them and we wait and we know, oh sure, they're, they're going to accomplish a lot. But they're also going to stumble and fall and bumble and fumble and, you know, do those things that we did likewise. And when they do, that's when you just look, bless, encourage, pick up, and set them back on their feet. Not blast, dash, stomp, romp, or, you know, chomp on them, but rather be encouraged that God has brought you to this time and this place, if you're older, that being a scribe instructed in the kingdom of God, you might be able to bring forth out of your experiences of life, out of those things you've learned from God, out of those ways and means that God has used your life to share those things that are from the olden days of old, where you know great conquering heroes of faith you know, were gone forth and you've seen what it was like to be of that nature. And likewise, things new that you see the young and the new and the new way that God is using you today to minister to that, being a sage as it were, or an elder or an older person, that you can share those things and communicate them effectively in the way that this generation might be touched and encouraged to be responsible and accountable for this generation of souls. Such a time as this we were born. And such a time as you're living today is what you are called today to do, to be, and to experience in Jesus as he leads you every day, knowing full well that you have the living God inside you.